This video will discuss Henry's Law for mixtures of liquid solutions. Okay, so as I said in the earlier video, Raoul's Law is obeyed whenever solutions are ideal, but most solutions are in fact non-ideal. For most solutions, you either have the following. You have that uh, particle A is not equal in size to particle B, so maybe they're not equal in size, maybe they're not similar in shape and or we have that the interactions between particle A and particle B are not equivalent to the interactions of A and B with themselves. So the energy of two A interacting with B pairs is not equal to the sum of A interacting with A and B interacting with B. So from Raoul's law, we said that the vapor pressure of a substance in the mixture equals the approaches the mole fraction or sorry for Raoul's law it's equal to the mole fraction of the pure vapor pressure of sorry the mole fraction of component i times the vapor pressure of pure liquid i sorry about that so that's always true as the mole fraction of i approaches 1 so as the mole fraction of of a component approaches 1 what happens is everything else in the solution is almost always the same uh, is almost always the same molecule so a basically only sees other molecules of a so the solution approaches ideal behavior because every particle that it interacts with is a particle of itself so even for non-ideal solutions as their mole fraction approaches one they start approaching an ideal uh, Raoul's law case well we have alternatively the case as the mole fraction of that component goes to zero the vapor pressure of component i approaches the mole fraction of that component times a constant which we're going to call the henry's law constant so what happens as the mole fraction of component a approaches zero is that a is now surrounded basically all by molecules of component b so at low mole fractions a the vapor pressure of A isn't determined by its interactions with other A particles, it's determined by its interactions with other B particles. So the Henry's law constant reflects the interactions between A, which as its mole fraction approaches zero, you might call the solute, and B, which as its mole fraction approaches one, you might call the solvent. So the Henry's law constant really tells us how a solute interacts with a solvent. Okay, and for ideal solutions, the Henry's law constant is just the vapor pressure of the pure liquid component I. So how do we get this Henry's law constant? Well, we can look at a graph of the vapor pressure of the solution versus the mole fraction of component I. So the Henry's law constant of a component is equal to the partial derivative of our pressure with respect to that mole fraction of component I evaluated at its mole fraction being zero. Okay, so what is this going to end up look like, looking like? So if we graph this here, we look at the mole fraction of A going from zero to one. As the mole fraction approaches one, we see that the uh, various solutions all converge towards ideal Raoul's law behavior. But at very low uh, mole fraction of A, that tells us about the interaction of whatever it of whatever the other component in the system is. So for Raoul's law, it's an ideal solution if a the interactions of A and B are equal to those of A and A, and then it, you get the purple line, which is ideal behavior. If the interactions of A and B are less strong than the interactions of A and A, then we get these type this type of positive deviation where the vape pressure is higher than you would expect by from Raoul's law. If the interactions of A and B are stronger than those of A and A, then we get negative deviation. It prefers to stay in the liquids phase and the vapor pressure deviates in a negative fashion relative to ideal behavior. So remember that the vapor pressure relates to the chemical potential which relates to how much the uh, particular molecule wants to be in the phase that it's in. So higher vapor pressure means a lower chemical potential in the vapor and a higher chemical potential in the solution and vice versa for negative deviation. 
Okay, or we could have the following kind of series. So we could have uh, component A interacting with uh, some solvent B, where we have a series of solvents of increasing size. So we could go from something that's small and very similar in size and shape to component A, to something so to where it's a ne nearly ideal behavior, to something that's bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, to where the interactions become more and more non-ideal at low mole fraction. But note that always at large mole fraction of A, you're getting closer to it interacting primarily with itself, and that uh, vapor pressure is going to approach that ideal Raoul's law state. So to summarize, we have Henry's law, which is obeyed as mole fractions of non-ideal solutions are very low in that given component. It deviates from Raoul's law, which is always true as mole fraction approaches one. Instead of our vapor pressure being determined by mole fraction times the vapor pressure of pure I, it's determined by the, va the mole fraction times the Henry's law constant, reflecting the interactions between A and B, which we get from the slope of our graph at very low mole fraction of component A.